Welcome to Violin Adventures number 20. Well, we're starting right off with some harp work. Well, we have trouble on the double, trouble with the lathe, so off to the market we go. Okay, you guys, here's my lathe corner. And I checked out my lathe, and this part here, all the bolts were completely loose. There were no water these on them, so I went straight out to the hardware store and got some. So I'm here editing this video and I see that I have no music in this section. So I'm just preparing the pieces for the harp and this is the soundboard. Here my dad is busy at work sanding out those harp necks. Here we're getting the back ready to receive the soundboard. Okay, this last week we got a violin in that, that needed some work. So we set it up, check out the tone, see how it turns out. Okay, we're in the midst of making another harp, which is exciting. But I have here a very nice looking violin. And what I need to do is set it up. It needs... Um, what I want to do is set it up properly and then see if it needs to have any more work done to it. So the bridge looks okay. I think the sound post is in a horrible spot, so we need to move that where it belongs. It needs new strings. The um, chin rest needs to be adjusted. It's a little bit in the wrong place and it may need new pegs. So um, I won't do the pegs right now, but I want to set this up and we're going to test it live here and determine from the tone if we want to open it up and do more work or if it's just fine. It's a very pretty violin. It's got a really nice back. It looks really nice. It's in really good condition for its age. So let's check it out together. So it's hard sometimes to know what kind of strings to put on an instrument, but I'm going to start with dominant. It's a good standard string that will sound good no matter what. And it has good volume. I'm not looking for sweetness right now. I just want to hear how well the violin sounds on a standard string. So we'll start with dominant.
Okay, it's all set up. The bridge and the sound posts are in the right place. You always want to keep an eye on your bridge. If it starts tipping this way, you want to push it back. So that's good. Centered. So now let's see what it sounds like. Okay, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. You know, this is, um, according to the label, if the label's right, it's a handmade instrument, and it was made in the 1800s. And sometimes the bass bar will just wear out. So I'm going to open this up. It looks like it's a very tiny bass bar. And um, we're going to make this respond better. <laughs> Look at that bass bar. That is way too tiny. Yeah, it's a tiny one. That is amazing. Is that okay, we got the top off. And this is the shortest bass bar I ever did see. It is really not tall at all. So I'm going to take that out. But in the meantime, I need to get the open seams closed. And I always use hot high glue, nothing else. It's only the best kind of glue. You don't want to use wood glue or anything like that. You want high glue, not only so you can take it apart again, but it's the only glue that brings the two pieces together and lets them continue to vibrate. Other glues, other glues create a, a line of glue in there and doesn't pull the pieces together. Um, and it, you know, it, it creates a line of glue which doesn't vibrate. So there's more reasons than just taking it apart. So here's our delightful mess. We're ready to go search out a nice, good base bar. We'll come in here and check out some wood. And I think right here is what we're looking for. Nice old block of wood. This is an old good block of wood. The grain is nice and straight. And from there, I cut off a piece.
taking a peek outside, there's some more work going on in the yard. few holdups on our harp, mainly because of my lathe. You saw the bolts were missing and, and now I'm not getting a good smooth turn and I think it's because the, the two ends probably aren't lined up right. So we're waiting on parts to come. So in the meanwhile, I'll get the base bar and the protection piece on the top of our sound sounding board glued up. And the Hebrew Minute. Okay, this is Isaiah 54, 10. And this meant a lot to me this week. Ki heharim yamushu vahagvaot tamutena vahazdi meitech lo yamush uvrit lomi lo tamut Amar Mirahamech Hashem. So this verse is very interesting in the Hebrew. It says, For just as the mountains, they will be removed, and the hills will be shaken, but my kindness or faithfulness or goodness to will not be removed, the same word, and the covenant of my peace will not be shaken, the same word as before, says the one who has mercy, Hashem. And this word mercy 
is usually translated mercy, but it has such a deeper meaning. It means deep love, tender affection, and compassion. So that said a lot to me. The one who has this deep love and affection, Hashem, the word for God that we don't pronounce. Hi everyone, don't go away. This is like a video postscript. We have a lot of content coming in the next week. For one, we're gonna see how that violin turned out. Uh, we opened up and removed the old bass bar. Uh, another thing, we'll be able to see what happened to the old lathe. I also have a little clip I'm gonna put on here at the very end of the video, and it, I finally got a little video of our, it could be an egret, it could be a heron, and I'm not real sure, it might be a heron. Anyway, it walks into our, down our creek, and when you look out the window, you just see his head walking along, and it looks like a snake. It creeps me out, but, um, I know he's just one of God's creatures, but anyway, I got some video of, of that creature and he comes and I'm sure he eats the fish in the creek, but anyway, you'll see it here. Okay, and one more thing that will be in the next video, Lord willing, is I'm going to have a visitor and she's real good with the camera, so that's exciting. Okay, see you guys next time. Have a great blessed week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening and for your thumbs up and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Until next time, God bless you. Bye!